Hello guys, in last video we talked about the virtual types, in this video we will talk more about virtual types and we go into more complex example. We will work on the same what we've done in the last video but with some refactoring. We have created this module in the last example and what I'm going to do is to abstract the warehouse functionality into a different module. So let's go ahead and do that. So create new module so it will be called the warehouse management training warehouse management and registration file so the module is created what I'm going to do is to take the API and paste it in here in the warehouse management and we are going to change the namespace of it warehouse management and here also warehouse management and that's done for the API we will also need to get the model copied across we don't need the extended because this will be extended from the virtual example we delete the API we delete this and we delete this we keep the warehouse extended in the virtual type example and in the warehouse management we will just refactor we will call this warehouse management and this will be warehouse management and in the repository this will be warehouse management as well now we have migrated these we also need the di xml file so we just copy across and paste it here we don't create the virtual type inside the core module the warehouse management and we don't have we don't know this exists outside the warehouse so we don't want to have this as well so we just keep these and in the XML file in the virtual example we delete the preferences and now what we are getting is a virtual type example dependent on warehouse management module which means in the module we just create sequence and then module and we call it training warehouse management and that's it in the extended module will be the same here extending from so we just need to import this warehouse management and it should be this one and the example will use the warehouse management module now if we just run setup upgrade and see what's going to be right so the setup upgrade is done so just refresh and see if there is any errors okay we have one error warehouse repositories is not exist which makes sense so where this being called so this one the view model is okay this warehouse management this i think this is it so should be warehouse management same here warehouse management hopefully this time is gonna work okay warehouse repository doesn't exist if we just delete the training here then refresh this is fine this is fine as well and here this is fine and this is warehouse management and that should be it so let's just clear cache we also disable the full page now refresh now you can see it's functional so if we go LAN 1 we get the code if we go MAN 2 MAN 1 sorry you get Manchester and I think it's good to see refactoring uh, in action because it's a uh, it's a complex uh, topic to talk about refactoring but we have done this refactoring uh, anyway and we will need to look at the virtual types so in the DIXML file we specified this warehouse repository extended as alternative or as a subtype of the warehouse repository and we injected it into the uh, view model and this subtype also has the warehouse management extended what if we don't want to use virtual types we want to use the warehouse repository extended so to do this we can do some coding and some extension in order to achieve that but as alternative we are introducing as alternative to virtual types so what is the equivalent 
work to be done that is can replace or can replicate the functionality of the virtual type so let's go ahead and do that so what we need to do is to replace this with a concrete class not a virtual type a concrete type or physical type whatever you call it I think virtual type is being introduced by Magento I haven't encountered the virtual types or a similar functionality in any of the frameworks outside Magento probably is specific to Magento but is not impossible to be introduced into other frameworks. what I'm going to do is to make it clear what virtual virtual type looks like in a physical or a concrete classes so what I'm going to do is the only thing I need to do is go to the model in the warehouse management and then copy the management warehouse repository sorry and then place it here I placed it here I use the virtual type example as the namespace I leave everything else and I will remove this because I will extend here I will extend from this repository as well so this is what we going to do and the constructor we will have is we call the parent construct and we pass in this and I don't think we need Need this so this is the only thing we need to do here and I don't need that I don't need that so this is the only thing we need now this warehouse repository is a virtual type and this extends from the warehouse management now you can see from this is similar to virtual type we are trying to extend it so this extends as well this extends from the original class and the only difference is this class is being injected into the virtual type and we will inject it now so we just copy it and paste it here I think we don't need the full path because they are same in the same folder and that's it this will be accepted because the warehouse management extended is a subtype of the warehouse management now this what we done this is literally the equivalent to the virtual type virtual type creating a subclass but it's a virtual is not concrete we created the concrete we created the subclass and the second step is to inject the warehouse management inside it in the XML but here we injected it in the constructor and they are the same the only difference is in the DIXML file we injected warehouse extended but what we are going to do here is copy this and inject it here and this is perfectly fine because we are passing a similar to virtual type inside the view model which is where it is here so we pass in a subtype it implements the warehouse repository anyway so by doing this injecting the concrete subtype not a virtual type and then we flush cache config block HTML and then if we run and it works fine you can see there is nothing difference if I go to Learn one will get everything as as is supposed to be in the in the virtual type because this is the equivalent implementation of the virtual type but it's a concrete type so which way you want to go with I'm not here to give you answers but I am raising more questions because I myself I don't know what to use whether to use this approach or use the virtual type the virtual type is a clean way of, of doing things but this method is also fine we just have one extra class however if I want to have more functionality in here I wouldn't be able to use the virtual type say for example you have this extended and then if I go to the original class it only has this get warehouse info and then get all warehouses and the extended it doesn't introduce any extra functionality it doesn't it only introduce extra data what if I want extra functionality extra features if I want to introduce another method in the class 
then the virtual type won't be uh, very helpful to me because there is no way of knowing this virtual type will have uh, access to the um, to the extra f methods because if I say here public function get discon if I write it and then it will give you an array and one of them is return lon one and this store probably warehouses so discontinued warehouses one of these is the lon one and if that's the case then I want to throw an error so in the repository here or in the management I would say here uh, warehouses equals this and then return warehouses also you would uh, will be fine if I have this as protected and then I just use it inside the class but if I want to use it outside the class so if you say we will say for each this get discontinued warehouses as code and you say if array key exists code warehouses want these to be warehouses then you throw new exception and you would say warehouses no longer exist now this is perfectly fine i i still i still be able to use the uh, virtual types but what if i want to use this condition outside of this get all warehouses because get all warehouses doesn't concern about logic it just return me a data and it's wrong it's not wrong but it's not perfect to have conditions inside here so i just revert this back and i'll just go here return array merge and then that's it this is what I want this method to get me. I don't want to add more responsibility to it. Now in the repository, I would have an implementation of this get new and then put it here and it just return parent new warehouse code and that's all I need. But the management, because I have this get as public, I can do the condition here. If an array code this management warehouse management get discontinued that should be returning get discontinued yeah because this is public then we throw an error warehouse is no longer exists yep and then end the line so you can see i wouldn't have the ability to do this with the virtual type so if you introduce new features new data if you introduce new data that's fine because virtual types will be working just fine. It doesn't need any extra code, but if you need things like these to add functionality, logic, you wouldn't be able to use the virtual type. And that is the difference between a virtual type and a concrete uh, example of uh, equivalence uh, to the virtual type. So it's up to you when to use a virtual type or when to use a concrete subclassing or subtype uh, of the original class i think the answer is not obvious until you have a specific situation or a specific case to use it but other than that i think the virtual type is rarely used and you can't see them everywhere in the code but you could see these examples all all the time as subclasses and then replace it in the in the constructor with the di xml file i think uh, this is it and i hope uh, this is uh, useful and clear some of the ambiguity please like and subscribe if you find it useful and i see you next time